Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrew Marco, and I'll be your host for today's episode of From the Living Room, a new show brought to you by the National Arts Council to help you enjoy Singapore culture anywhere. We'll be meeting local artists off stage and on camera instead, as they perform for us from their living room to yours. Every weekday evening, we'll be streaming fresh performances from some of our Singaporean artists for a taste of classical, fusion, and ethnic music as well as traditional and contemporary dance to entertain you as you're winding down for the day. Because even when our theatres and studios and concert halls take a brief interlude, culture carries on. And if you're tuning in for the first time, don't worry. I'll be chatting with them and learning more about who they are. So by the end of the show, I'm pretty sure that we're all going to be pretty close friends. Tonight, we have with us the Longhorn Quartet. Hey, hello everyone. Hello, Good to see you guys. Hi. All right. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be talking with them and asking them a few questions before they start. Now, uh, you guys have been playing together for such a long time. Uh, and, and David, who I believe is the, the, the leader of the, the whole quartet, I need to ask you, how, what made you guys come together in the first place? Uh, we started off um, with um, uh, four enthusiastic trombone players and then we just come together with the urge to play higher level of music um, so that uh, we can be an example and an encouragement to fellow trombonists uh, to explore the trombone quartet um, uh, medium uh, because um, the trombone quartet uh, the music is very um, is is a um, is a huge variety and it encompasses a lot of genres of music, and um, there are there are a lot of music that are um, from from a beginner level all the way to a very difficult professional level, so um, we want to encourage that to to happen and explore. That's awesome. That's that's really cool. I like how you talk about um, trombone quartets and the, the musical genres that they can cover. Uh, what are some of the genres that have influenced you guys and have become a part of your sound? I, 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 I think uh, swing or jazz music has, uh, has um, become, part, become part of us. I think, uh, yeah, it, it, because uh, basically there are not many, many um, groups that they actually uh, embark into swing playing or jazz playing in local yeah. Yeah, which is a shame really, because jazz is such a beautiful genre of music. I mean, it's it's my absolute number one favorite genre of music. I, I've, I've loved it since I was young and it's, it's yeah, it's, it's really awesome. But how about like, do, do you guys think um, that the, there's a possibility of playing I don't know, house music or, or, you know, these, these really electronic sounds. Do you think that there is a clash of sorts? We haven't explored that yet, but soon, I think. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Yeah. So uh, these guys are about to begin their first set. Um, and I believe the first song that they're going to play for us is B Big Win. Big Am I pronouncing that right? I, I'm, I'm terrible. Correct me if I'm wrong. Big Win? Big Win, yes. Oh, yes. All right, cool. So could you tell us more about this song and uh, why you guys chose it to be the first song of the set? Um, the Beguine, the, the piece of music uh, we chose, um, uh, firstly, Beguine is a, is a dance. Uh, and <clears throat> um, the whole program, uh, we are trying to encompass um, different genres of music. Um, there are going to be all the different kind of styles that's uh, involved. And some of them, even within the same piece, they are different styles. Uh, so we started with Big Win. Um, for me, I chose it uh, personally because of the composer. The composer, his name is called Arthur Frankenpole, and he has spent uh, his whole life um, teaching music and composing music um, for, for the so-called lesser players. So a lot of his uh, composition output um, is meant for the purpose of education, um, not really for um, only a um, so-called a, a easy level. He wrote music for different levels, but um, it is very, very um, applicable to us, the four of us, because obviously the four of us are all music educators as well. And uh, Mr. Frankenpole has dedicated his entire life 
uh, writing music um, for for um, groups like um, trombone quartet and tuba quartet and um, concertos and solos for all the so-called lesser instruments. Um, and so it is interesting in that way that um, it's directly applicable to what we are doing. Um, sadly, uh, Mr. Franklin Paul has uh, passed away in June last year, uh, but um, he dedicated his life and taught in the university uh, all throughout his whole life. And um, he, in fact, um, one of um, his um, books are still kind of the standard for pianos pedagogy right now uh, in the world. Wow, that sounds awesome. A big thank you to Mr. Arthur Frankenpole. That sounds like a really cool guy. All right, uh, without further ado, I'll let you guys take over for the first song, Big Win. Wow, and that was Big Win by Arthur Frankenpaul. That was really awesome. Um, now we're going to talk a bit with uh, David, who just coming off playing that song. Hey, David. Hi. That was really awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. So you're obviously a, a really big fan of Arthur Frankenpaul, and uh, the next song that you're about to play for us is called Walt Song, and I believe it was also arranged by Arthur Frankenpaul. Is that right? Uh, it's, it's composed by him. Um... It's composed uh, so, by him, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, this is uh, a part of uh, um, a longer piece uh, with with a few parts called the Pop Suite Number no. Three. Uh, Arthur Franklin Poe wrote the Pop Suite and Pop Suite Number no. Two, Number no. Three, Number no. Four, Number no. Five, and Number no. Three is written for a trombone quartet. Um, <clears throat> the rest were written for different combinations of instruments, and and uh, so this um, the first one was. Uh, Begin and um, the second one right now, the next one is uh, called a waltz song. Um, it is um, a not very traditional waltz. Uh, when we talk about waltz, naturally we thought uh, we think of ballroom dancing, but um, yeah, like the three four type um, of dum ba, 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 ba. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But the waltz uh, has a predecessor uh, and. Um, the predecessor uh, starts uh, all the way back um, to when um, when the dance was first developed as a waltz, <clears throat> um, 
and maybe even earlier than that, um, there is a whole evolution of uh, how it became the waltz. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Frankenpol uh, did not uh, write it as a very straight um, three, four time, don't tap tap, don't tap tap all the way like a ballroom mm -hmm, dancing. Mm -hmm. But he mixed everything up from the old traditions to the new traditions. And at the same time, he um, tried to use the, the range of the trombone to demonstrate uh, the different count, sounds and textures that's possible uh, with, um, with a, a four trombone players. Wow, that sounds really cool. It sounds like he was really ahead of his time and when he was thinking about, about you know, the, the way the trombone can be used musically. It's no wonder he's such a, an incredible influence on you guys. Um, it is kind of rare uh, because uh, Mr. Frankenpol, uh, two of his teachers, uh, one is Miol, who is a very famous composer, uh, and another is uh, Boulanger, uh, who is, um, who is um, a major influence on uh, Gershwin and, um, and uh, Samuel Barber and Leonard Bernstein. Um, and so, um, in fact, um, when he was, uh, when Mr. Frankenpol was uh, studying in France, he received the first prize in composition, which is um, not easy at all. Um, and so um, having such a, a, um, um, a figure of, um, of such standards of composition, uh, writing so-called for, for um, instruments that are not so commonly done um, is, um, is a privilege for us. That sounds awesome. I'm really excited to hear this song and I'm sure everyone watching and listening is ex as excited as well. So without further ado, please take it away you guys with Walt's song. Thank you. And that was Waltz Song by Arthur Frankenpole, performed by the Longhorn Quartet. Now we're going to have a little chat with Pissett, who is one of the trombonists of the band. Hey, Pissett, what's up? Thank you for that, man. That was Hello. an amazing, amazing song. Hey. Yeah. All right. So um, I believe Pissett is the person who arranged the next song that they're going to do. And the next song is called Black Orpheus. Pissett, could you tell us more about the arrangement of this song? 
Oh, uh, these songs uh, I arranged, uh, actually, I arranged for my students, private students, years ago uh, for, for them to perform in their school. And this this song is, they have great melody, okay, it's composed by Luis Foreno Bonfe. He's a uh, Brazilian guitarist and a composer. Great melody. And and I think the key of this song is, 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 is good for trombone, it's in key G minor, which is a B flat uh, major uh, key. So is is I think it suit our instrument very well. And and yeah, is is good songs. I love it so much. That's awesome, man. All right. So without further ado, I'll let you guys get to it. This is Black Orpheus by the Longhorn Quartet. Thank you.
And that was Black Orpheus. It's such a groovy song. I just wanted to get up and dance half the time. That was awesome. Uh, now we're going to have a chat with Shume, uh, who is another one of the trombonists of the band. Hello, Shume. Thank you for that. That was an, that was an amazing performance. Hi. Hey. All right. So I believe the next song that you guys are going to do is called Frippery Number 8, which is really cool because Frippery sounds like a, a Looney Tunes character trying to say slippery. You know, like uh, Sylvester the Cat. Thuffering, thuckatash. This floor is really frippery. Um, <laughs> like, could you tell us more about this song and why you guys chose to do this? Okay, uh, Fippery was um, written by a horn player. Uh, his name is uh, Luel E. Shaw. Okay, he wrote actually many combinations for his students. Actually, he was um, he was also a, a horn tutor at the University of Buffalo. So he wrote all these. Um, swing type of music for his students to to pick up how to play dance music and um and he started because it was so popular that um there were requests for him to compose more so he wrote actually uh fripperies tripperies uh beeperies and quimperies okay all these are like for different oh wow sizes, that's, a, that's like a whole duets. bunch of periods. Yeah, so like uh, for duets, trio, uh, quartets, and quintets, and Frippery number eight is taken from uh, his volume two. He actually wrote eight volumes for Fripperies, so we are playing number eight. And this piece, um, um, this piece starts with a barbershop quartet. Okay, it's like a four part. Harmony oh, wow. with the melody. I love yeah, barbershop so, quartets. Those are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it started with that and then it goes into a quick time into swing and then it ends with the barbershop quartet again. So it's a very nice piece. So since we are trying to uh, play different types of swing and genre, so we decided to do this piece. So do enjoy. That is awesome. I, I am a huge fan of barbershop quartets and I love swing music. I love jazz. So I'm really excited. I want to let you guys get to it. Please, uh, get, put your, we can't really put your hands together, can you? They're not going to hear it. But still, if you're at home, put your hands together anyway for Frippery number eight.
and that was frippery number eight i think the best of all the fripperies out of all the fripperies that they have ever been frippered uh, now we're going to talk to tiam he who is the last trombonist of the quartet hello hi everybody hi hey man thanks for that that was really cool man i that swing music is such a fun genre of music and i'm sure you could agree with me uh, could you tell me more about about your love for swing music all right um maybe just let me uh, uh talk a bit about swing okay basically swing yeah. refers to a specific period of jazz known as the swing era uh roughly about the 1930s to the early 1940s so basically the term swung note swung rhythm is um, more specifically used to refer to the technique that involved in the lengthening and shortening of the first and second consecutive uh, notes all right so basically in a standard swing band there are basically uh, five saxophones four trumpets and four trombones and a rhythm section and trombone usually don't get much of our attention or limelight as compared to the saxophone and trumpets however great trombonists like glenn miller i'm sure that uh, all of you guys heard about him began to form their oh, yeah. own swing band and that's when the time trombone actually moved into the spotlight and become instruments of a lyrical smooth and soft playing kind of thing you know so uh, okay let's let's uh, let me talk about my the minor excursion and the meaning of swing It's arranged by jack gill now basically this swing church is uh, especially fun for uh, our trombone quartet because there are basically several uh, many uh, good melodic lines for each of the trombone parts so it includes some chorus of some minor blues in the middle with the main melody in a archipelago setting so for myself uh, I love playing these numbers actually uh, because it gave me um, freedom to express myself through and in between the fast moving lines, which uh, I find very exciting and satisfying. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is, isn't it? I mean, I absolutely love swing yeah, as well. Yeah. It's it's um, one of yeah. the one of the first. I remember the one of the first few jazz songs I ever heard was you know it don't mean a thing and it was just so it just don't yeah, yeah, yeah. mean a thing if it ain't got that swing it just it just pulls you in like it's so uh, yeah, it pulls man, you in and then it keeps you there which is such a fun <laughs> yeah man. yeah absolutely yeah so yeah so enjoy the two swing pieces man. all right yeah so here is minor excursion by the Longhorn Quartet. Thank you. 
Wow, that was really cool. I don't know about you guys, but I, I've got this kind of like a little bounce going, and I and I my my feet won't stop tapping on the floor. Uh, <laughs> but that's a, a great, great swing two swing songs that they've played for us. Now we're gonna have a chat. We're gonna bring everybody back into the room, and we're gonna have a little chat before their last song. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. All right. So, um, can you tell us more about this last song that you guys are gonna pick? That's a plenty. It's a uh, is it is it a, is it a jazz kind of inspired song as well? Um, that's a plenty is uh, going to be um, the the piece uh, is arranged by Jack Gale, the same person who arranged the um, uh, minor excursion and meaning of swing. But in this uh, special number, um, we have um, um, an, uh, a solo. Uh, the first one uh, that's uh, be play, that will be played by um, Samantha Chong. Um, and the second one will be played by Tiam He. Um, and they have got uh, some uh, solos uh, within them. And, um, and then I will play only the beginning and um, the very end uh, of the melody when I'm taking the lead part. Um, the bass uh, trombone is going to be very challenging. Uh, he has um, consistently very low notes. Um, and he is the, supposed to be the rock solid uh, metronome for us um, that we, we count on. We have played this piece many times. Um, in fact, I think uh, we have used this piece as an ending for, geez, um, maybe 20 it. concerts. <laughs> yeah. um, so so wow. we are very familiar with yeah. this. Um, and and uh, we would like to, and it is a string piece. Uh, that's a plenty. It's actually a, a jazz standard. Um, so it is um, it's, uh, rearranged uh, to have the open solos. Uh, so. You guys want to add on it? All right. Well, you guys, you guys say that you guys have been using this for that's the ending for over twenty concerts, and I just want to know, like, uh, has there ever been well, like what what's your favorite or funniest moment that you guys have had together over the past ten odd years? To flip the page, I think. <laughs> Even uh, <laughs> my 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 score even fly off be before uh, during the performance, but yeah, it went well. <laughs> oh wow! You, you know that's actually. I'm glad you brought that up because that's a very terrifying thing. I think people don't realize how scary it is when your scores uh, fly off the the page and. It actually happened to me one time in, in, in the concert band when I was in primary school and I was, I was playing the tuba and I had no idea what happened, but, but the, my scores flew off and this was during SYF and um, I panicked. So I just started playing random nonsense, but nobody noticed. I think I was just very lucky. I just kept playing the F and I was like, whoa, whoa, and I just kept going at it. And, um, you know, no one said anything. So, <laughs> yeah, I think everybody. Yeah. How about the rest of you guys? You probably look very cute then. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, you know, when I when I joined the band, I wanted to play the saxophone because I love you know I love jazz. But then they took one look at my 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 size and they were like, no no no, you you play the tuba. And I was like, oh, that's not really fair. But then you know, I I saw how big the 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 tuba was, and it made sense to me because no one else could kind of hold it. Everyone else would would be you know they'd just tip over, but not me. <laughs> All right, but what what about the rest of you guys? Are there have there been any funny moments or your favorite fondest memory of being part of the Longhorn Quartet? Yeah, me. Oh, exactly. Too, maybe too many. <laughs> I, I can't remember any. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I. Without further ado, I think we're going to go into the last song right now, which is That's a Plenty. I'll let you guys take over. I'm going to really enjoy this. I love jazz, so yeah. Thank you. 
And that's it for tonight's episode of From the Living Room. Can we please, everyone, get a massive round of applause for the Longhorn Quartet? That was an amazing set. There they are. All right. Yes, even if you're at home, please just keep clapping. We can, we can, feel, we can feel the spirit. We can't hear it, but we can feel it. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for performing for us. And thank you, viewers, for spending your evening with us. We hope this brought some joy into your day, as it has mine, and we hope that you keep on dancing, we, you keep on doing that swing uh, anywhere in your house. We'll see you next time for the next show here on NAC's Facebook page. Till then, continue enjoying Singapore culture anywhere and everywhere. Good night! <laughs> <laughs>